quick uh, video of how my wife and I did the uh, cabinets uh, countertop for our kitchen in our camper build uh, using some acrylic uh, latex paints, just some stuff that we had left over from when we painted the wall here in our living room and uh, used this Floetrol flood and just really one specialty paint. It's just like a metallic silver that we added and what we did is called a I believe it's called a dirty pour with a swipe and I don't really know a whole lot about it. My wife's done all the research and figured out how to do it. I don't really know how to teach you how to do it but I'm going to show you what we did and kind of describe it as as we're doing it and if it's something you like maybe you could try out but hope like you like what you see and also it's not totally done. We have not um, epoxied it and we're going to do that right before we actually install the countertop in the camper. So if you want to see the complete finished product, you've got to check back in another video. All right, thank you. The plank here that I'm using to create our countertop is just an edge glued finger jointed, uh, I believe it's three quarter inch thick by 20 inches by eight foot that I cut down to the size that we needed. And I found this at Lowe's. It was real inexpensive, like $35 for the whole plank. So here we have uh, five different colors that we have mixed in with the Floetrol flood product at a two to one ratio. It's two parts of the Floetrol to one part um, acrylic or latex paint. Uh, we used, I think it's a greenish blue, a teal.
the metallic silver, black, and white. Here I'm just um, lifting the, the uh, countertop from left to right to try to get the uh, proper amount of coverage to make sure that the entire uh, surface is covered with paint. Uh, if you see the uh, silver color that we're just putting down right now is going to be our swipe color, which is the color that we're going to actually pull across the top of the rest of the colors. And it actually has about five or six drops of silicone in it and this is from like a treadmill lubricant and what we do is just put about five drops in the cup and stir it up really well and then we're going to drag that across the rest, rest of those colors here and that's what I've got is this paper towel. It's just a damp paper towel, lightly dampened and I'm just going to pull it slowly and evenly across the top without trying to grab too much other color and, and uh, pull too much of the paint off of the countertop. Just trying to put very little pressure as I'm pulling across. Now I'm going to lift the countertop and try and get the uh, paint to move and cover any spots uh, that may need some coverage. This, this technique also will increase the size of the cells and change the layout, the shapes, the dimensions of all the patterns that are forming. So this is all based on personal preference. You can let it sag as little or as much as you want. It's important to make sure that when you start that you have your your canvas or your countertop, whatever you're doing, make sure it's level. Um, because if you don't, as the, you let your project dry overnight, your paint will all sag off one side of your, of your canvas. Here I'm using a heat gun. Uh, not trying to use it to push the paint, although you can do that. I'm just using it to pop any air bubbles that might be there. And here's the mostly finished product. We have not put any epoxy on it, and at this time it's still wet. So as it dries and the paint continues to sag, it will actually still continue to change. Uh, the cells may get bigger, smaller, and move a bit. Thanks for watching. I hope this was somewhat educational. If you have any questions, make sure to comment below. I'll uh, make sure to leave a list of everything that we used. Um, other than the actual paint colors, because you can pick any colors you want if you're wanting to do this.